Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Guitar Guts with me, Mark Murray. Uh, NAM edition. I went to NAM this last week, so if you don't know what NAM is, it's a big musical convention. Tons of awesome stuff. All the companies come together and they put all their new stuff and they put on uh, displays with all kinds of cool stuff, performances and everything. I ended up going and taking 200 pictures, 200 something pictures, uh, over 40 minutes of video. So I'm going to show you just the first booth I went to, um, ESP booth. I spent the most time out of any of other, the other booths there. They had a display of a bunch of the old Metallica guitars. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. It's going to be me walking into NAM and then my journey up to the ESP booth. The next couple weeks I'll be showing way more footage. I've already been showing it on my Instagram, at Guitar Guts. So go check out that. Um, but yeah, the next few weeks and my YouTube channel, Guitar Guts, check that out too. So let's get into the video right now. Me walking into NAM. Okay, so this is a right at Saturday morning. Most people are still hungover from Friday night because this has been going on for four days at this point. This is the first haul. And all it's right, right finally made it. I've been freaking out all week watching everybody's Instagrams, and uh, I got a nice little list of places I got to check out. So I have no idea where the hell I am right now. This place is a giant maze. It's gigantic. It's this huge convention center. So let's go upstairs, check out some ESPs, some Van Halen, Fit, uh, Fender, uh, Gibson's up there. I don't know how to get up there, but let's figure it out. I made a little note card that showed me uh, all the little spots where they're all at, so I knew I wanted to start at the top of my favorite stuff, ESP. This is the main floor, like I said, this is 10 a.m., right when they opened up on Saturday morning, so it's not a lot of people here yet. You'll see later in the videos more people show up. But this gives you that idea. See how far down these hallways go? This way, both that way. That's how wide it is, and there's like five of these giant halls back, back to back, A through D, and then there's a basement called E. You can also go upstairs, so that's where I'm going right now. ESP is up on, I think, the second floor. So I hit the escalator. I saw Steve Vai walking right over there. So here's the ESP booth. This guitar is beautiful, the inlay work. I'll show you some pictures at the end of this, but there's a samurai sword right there built in the inlay. Uh, the flowers on the neck is just unbelievable. So this is the KH3 ESP original 1993 Kirk Hammett signature model with the spider on it. One of Kirk Hammett's real original guitars. Notice the spider inlays on it. This is James Hetfield, one of his very original ESP explorers. It's uh, the inlays show a man evolving into a werewolf. I'll have way more pictures of all these at the end of this. I took a lot of pictures, so this is one of Kirk's uh, originals. I think this was built in '93, '94. Not the original Ouija, but one of his original Ouijis. Uh, I'll tell you more about that later on when I have more pictures of them too. This is Jeff Hanneman's uh, Marshall head, and then that's Kirk Hammett's, uh, Jeff Hanneman is from Slayer, Kirk Hammett's cab right there. There's Lars Ulrich's drum head with all the bands signed it, Metallica. We got Stephen Carpenter's eight-string ESP, um, one of his real ones. Lynch Mob, uh, that's George Lynch's road case. Right above this eight-string, we got Jeff Hanneman's, I'm, it's all shaky, I'm extending the boom uh, on my camera. Jeff Hanneman, one of his original ESPs of Slayer. Uh, this is George Lynch, one of his very original, the paint checking, you can see that, one of his original ESPs, probably from the late 80s. Um, and then up at the very top, you can see there's Rod Wood's picture, one of his original Tele style ESPs. Here's inside the booth, so the purple to me was one of the hottest colors this year gold uh, hardware on this. This wall is all one-off. Artists uh, got, get to choose however they want to design a guitar and they individual artists at ESP design these things. So they're one-offs. They're all for sale. People are buying them during the NAMM convention. Some girls are singing over there. This one was one of my favorites right here. This purple one. It's blue and purple. It's kind of like a, a California sunset. We get skies that look like this. Gold hardware. It's un unbelievable the, the work they put into these things. You got seven strings over here. Just beauty. Natural wood. This one's a bass. This five string in the front. Up here, this one's very 80s to me. It's a very 80s classical horizon ESP. Up top, that blue one's beautiful. That wood one right here, I love that thing. That gray one right there, I love with the maple neck. I, I spent a lot of time just staring at the guitars here. So 
this right here, my volume is <laughs> so over there, there's the E2 series, there's some basses, there's all the LTDs. Over here, there's some more signature guitars. Um, here's around the back, that's where the entrance to the booth is back there. So here's a Kirk Hammett, new Kirk Hammett signature model. Demonology signs all over it. It looks like it has an EMG 81 and a 60 in the neck. A f original Floyd Rose on it, even though it's an LTD model. It's a 6KH602. Gorgeous. I love this thing. It's like it kind of looks like a blue baton, you know, with like the little weird logos. On the neck, we have the uh, skull and crossbone classic Kirk Hammett style. Headstock matches with cool, more cool stuff on it. And this is the white zombie LTD Kirk Hammett. Really cool inlays, the big bat on the 12th fret. White zombie. It's a uh, Bella Lagazzi or whatever you think. Uh, here's the old vintage KH2 Kirk Hammett uh, ESP. So it's got their the skull crossbones. It says Kirk Hammett right on the headstock. Original a relic model. And then here is the classic style. This is the LTD. Though. It's a KH602 uh, LTD Kirk Hammett model. Some James Hetfield signatures. That's the Snakebite Explorer looking one. The, the Vulture is the V. A couple other signature models above that. I think that's Alexi. The LA is the Children of Bodom. Both of these James Hetfield guitars. Here's some LTDs. So that blue one right there, I got a picture of that I'll show you guys later. There we got the Explorers up there. We got the Eclipses over there. Somewhere along this wall, uh, I think it's right there. I must have missed it. There's a gorgeous red H1000 that I'll show you at the end. Um, here's looking back at the stage. I'll walk back over there. Check out the E2s real quick, I think. Yeah, with the E2s over here, which are like a line between ESP and LTD. Really clean, nice guitars. Uh, that's the signature wall. Making our way outside of the booth. There's a couple more of the one-off artist one-offs. Some real beautiful ones. So now I'm going to show you guys uh, a couple of the photos that I took. I took, like I said, over 200 photos at NAMM and uh, 40 minutes of video footage. So this is the guitar walking up to the booth I was showing you at the beginning with the, the katana swords, has a barbed wire on the headstock, flowers all inlaid into it. It's amazing artwork. This is the katana sword with all the flowers. Again, bar more barbed wire. Um, they have to carve out the wood and then in, they inlay this different materials. I don't know what the red is, but some of it's abalone, some of it is um, mother of pearl. Just crazy work that they do. This is Kirk Hammett, so I found out that this isn't his real original first Ouija. He's had bu a bunch of Ouija uh, guitars over the years, but the original one had a couple of typos on the paint job, and the crescent moon, the... Uh, Islamic flags were facing the opposite direction. Also, it had 20 of uh, the 24th fret. It had another double star like it does at the 12th. But this is one of his that he played with live, and it's likely that he this was probably built in the 90s, but he didn't play it live till the 2000s, from what I read on guitarscollector.com. They have a lot of different profiles for professional guitarists, personal collections, and production models, and all that jazz, so that's what they said about this specific model. This is just like the holy grail of James Hetfield Explorers. It's this and Eat Fuck, the white one. This is um, from 1991, it's the wolf. Here you can see the uh, the close-up on the inlays. It starts with the, the man walking upright on the left-hand side. Halfway through the neck, you can see he's grabbing his head, he's cur curled over in pain on the ground on all fours. Then by the first fret, he's howling at the moon, full werewolf mode. This other, this is the KH3, the Kirk Hammett's, his first lineup of signature guitars. And to me as a kid, this was so cool because it's a 24 fret guitar with a Floyd Rose, but it's a Les Paul. Had EMGs, which I loved at the time. Um, he, he put the Spider and the 13 stickers on it. Here's a picture of the full display. So we had the three Metallica guitars on the left. You can see a big Metallica case on the left-hand side bottom. Um, it had two Mesa boogies in it. That's what it said on it. That case right there that's standing up 
is a uh, the black guitar case is the case for the Wolf guitar. It said Wolf on it. That cabinet right there is Kirk Kamitz, one of his cabinets, with Jeff Hanneman's Marshall on top of it. Really cool display. My favorite thing at NAMM that I've probably ever seen. I went four years now, and uh, this is probably my favorite thing I've seen. There's my handsome face enjoying myself in front of the, the display, the Metallica display. So cool to me. This is that purple. Uh, it's a Horizon style. But it's got that sunset that finish on it. It's a, it's a quilted maple finish, but it's got blue and purple, and they highlight each other and complement each other, and then it's got gold hardware, and to me, this is like the hottest combo. I saw, you know, there's a Gibson Les Paul that I'll show you guys in one of the next episodes. It's got that, or just follow me on Instagram at Guitar Guts. I showed it on there, too. Here's a seven-string, all purpled out uh, with gold hardware. Just gorgeous. Um... Another Horizon guitar, I love it. I'm not sure if this is an F body or something else, but this thing is just asymmetrical and evil and radical, and it's got the purple and blue look with like a, I think that's quilted maple. I don't think it's flamed. It's almost like a hybrid of the two. Gold hardware once again, uh, 24 frets. It's beautiful. I love that combination. This is an Eclipse style, so it's like a Les Paul, but it's all gold hardware, all gold. The wood is just glowing gold. It's got gold knobs, gold pickups, and the pickguard is natural wood too. It's just so cool. So this is a multi-scale guitar. I think it's LTD's and ESP's first guitar they made, which is multi-scale. This is the Horizon 1000 I was talking about earlier, the H1000. Looks a lot like my Edwards. It's got the same abalone binding. It's got the same quilted maple red finish on it beautiful man I love this guitar just caught my eye I loved it and last but not least this is the uh, Eclipse series less like a Les Paul I think my next guitar is gonna be like in this finish here here quilted maple blue I love green I love blue they're like the coolest colors to me they look cool on guitars purple is amazing but uh, this one here I just another one that just really caught my eye Eclipse Quilted maple blue doesn't get much better than that. So, thanks so much for tuning in. You can always catch my vlogs at guitarguts.com. Usually, it's a link directly to my YouTube channel. Sometimes I shift it around and I'll make it point to something else for a couple days. But in general, you can go to guitarguts.com and watch all these. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's a big thing for me. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers right now, and I'm not there. My Instagram is also going to be full of that stuff. Um, lots of pictures. Like I said, I got 200 photos I took. So those are all going to be ending up on my Instagram. I've been posting like four photos a day. At Guitar Guts. You can follow me there. Twitter, I post them all on there too. At Guitar Guts USA. And there's even a Facebook page. So if you just type in Guitar Guts right there on Facebook, it'll come up. It's uh, an easy way that you could share things with your friends if you follow the, the Facebook page. So... YouTube and Instagram are my favorite too, though. You can check those out. Other than that, um, next week I'm going to have some footage of me finishing up my Frankenstein, my EVH guitar I've been working on. I finally wet sanded it. I got it looking shiny and beautiful. I wired it up. I got some of the accessories put on it, the old 1971 quarter and the eye bolts and the all the all the cool stuff. So it sounds amazing. I got a Seymour Duncan SH11 uh, custom custom in it. And it cranks. I'll play some of that for you. I'm going to show the footage of me wet sanding it, putting it together. And also, I'll show you guys the NAM booth for the EVH NAM booth. Cool guitars. So, I'll show you that stuff next week. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you then.